Hello and welcome to Let's Dev with Ren. I'm Ren and today we're going to be looking at creating Destiny's user interface for their weapons and abilities. So you can see that just here and what we're going to do is go over this, how to make this in the UMG designer. So this is the UMG designer, it's how you make user interface elements in Unreal Engine 4. On the left you can see a bunch of different types of um, components that you can bring in and then you can see quite a large hierarchy um, for how this is managed and keeps all the sizes correct and stuff like that. So we're going to go over all those things and if we just quickly look at that what we're going to do is first of all we'll look at the UMG designer and we'll create sort of the basis for um, this element the sizes and things like that. We'll then look at the palette and the panels and then finally we'll look at images and what's called padding in order to give our elements in UMG some sort of like organization. So without further ado, let's jump into Unreal and we'll start creating this UMG element. So the first thing that we're going to need is a UMG widget. So if we right click in the content browser, go to user interface, go to the bottom and you'll see widget blueprint. So that's what we want to create. And we'll just call this Destiny Weapons. And if we open that up, what we'll see is the basic UMG designer. Now in order to get started, the first thing I usually do when creating UMG is sort of pick a size that I want it to be on the screen. Is this going to be a full size um, element? Is it going to be sort of HUD that's arranged on um, the full screen for the player? Or is it going to be something that I use as, a, as sort of a part of a full screen? And in this example, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So at the top right you'll see fill screen. If I click that and go to custom, I'm now going to make a non-full screen size UMG element and it's going to be 1000 by 300. So that's sort of the basis for um, this element, the size of this element. And then we need to basically split this up into its individual sections. So we know we've got sort of a bar at the top, we've got two um, abilities and a couple of weapons, right? So once we've picked a size and we've selected that, the first thing that we're going to look at is panels. And panels allow you to, to organize those elements so you've got vertical boxes, which do exactly what they say. They, ar they arrange other elements, like other vertical boxes, other horizontal boxes, buttons, borders, images, things like that. And they organize them vertically. So if we look at the horizontal box, that will do it horizontally. You've got overlay, which allows you to put certain elements on top of each other that don't usually allow you to put them on top of each other. Widget switches, which use an index to allow you to switch between whatever's inside that as a child. For today we're going to focus on vertical boxes and horizontal boxes. So first of all I'll drag a vertical box in and then I'll make that the full size of the screen by changing the offsets on the right hand side and that's just under the anchors there so we can pick an anchor all sides and offset it to zero which basically means it will take up those full space. Now I know that the first thing in this UMG is going to be the progress bar at the top so I'll drag a progress bar in and you'll see that just fills a small space and on the right hand side we can set that to fill the entire box. That fill option is really useful because it's percentage based so once we drag another element in such as a horizontal box for the other elements so we'll drag a horizontal box in and fill that. Now that we've got two of these we can start changing the percentages that these take up so if I put it to 0.5 it's taking up half the space that it originally took up so for now we'll leave that at 1 and I know that we have two horizontal boxes in this UI. So basically this one's going to be the progress bar, this horizontal box is going to hold the abilities and the main weapon that you've got equipped and this bottom horizontal box is going to basically be used for spacing out um, sort of like a blank space and then the right hand side of this horizontal is going to be the other widgets for um, the weapons that you don't have equipped. So you can see these aren't um, sort of taking up the sort of space that I wanted them to. So what we can do is we can change the fill of this top bar to say 0.2 and now that's just taking up the top area. Um, so one of the things that I'll do quickly is just change the colors of these just to show you sort of how you can do that. On the right hand side with the progress bar if you scrub the percentage you can sort of see the color that it's using and you'll see the fill color just here. So I'll change that to sort of a yellow color like the supercharged color from Destiny and I'll also change the background colour so to change that you need to open style and then go to background image and then you see tint so I might make this sort of like 
0.7 opacity so it's a little bit see-through when you're not charged and I'll also make it quite dark like sort of a greyish colour and that'll look pretty cool so the next thing that I'm going to show you is how to create sort of the ability boxes and in order to create those I'll be using what's called a border so this is another element on the left hand side if I just drag that in or drag it down to uh, the hierarchy we'll be able to drop it in there and you'll see again it's not filling so it's just taking up the space that it sort of needs to take it's got nothing in its children so that basically means it doesn't need to take up any space so if I uh, put something in there it will size up because it's set to auto or if I hit fill it will fill the whole size of that screen so uh, now that we've got that I might change the color of this quickly so that it sort of represents the ability color that I want um, and I'll also change the opacity again to around 0.8 now we want to put an image into this so if we put an image and just drag it down or again put it straight over the top of the element you'll see that it sort of just fills the whole area and that's based on these horizontal vertical alignments if I set that to center it will take up hardly any space so I'll set that to full and then I'll select an image so I've imported a few images these are just PNG images and uh, I'll select power one and you'll see straight away that it's like really stretched so one of the things that we want to do is make sure that that doesn't happen and we can use a what's called a scale box to make sure that something is scaling to its native resolution and ratio. So what I do to do this is I right click it and go to uh, wrap with and then I wrap it with what I need. So I'll wrap it with a scale box and now you'll see that it's the correct size. You can also get the scale box from the panels drop down in the palette. So you'll see it just there, scale box, and it gives you a little bit of a description on what it does. So now that we've got that, that's uh, that's one ability sort of set up. So what I'll do is I'll I'll copy that border and I'll paste it again. So now we've got two, and I'll change the second one to be uh, the different ability. So now we've got two different abilities, and the last part of this horizontal box for the main weapon is the image of the weapon and the ammo amounts so your reserve ammo and the currently used ammo so in order to do that I'm going to create another border and that border is going to hold its own horizontal box to split out the elements within it and the reason I'm using a single border there is because I want that whole element to have its own background color and I don't want there to be any gaps in between um, any of the elements so if I make another border by dragging it down and into that horizontal box it will add it to the end or I can drag it and sort of like put it anywhere in that hierarchy but we want it right at the bottom and then if I hit fill on that you'll notice now that these are all filling evenly and they always fill evenly when their percentage is set to one and what I want is for the first two borders to not be filling as much space so the space that these are going to fill uh, is 30 percent of the width so between the two of them that's uh, 0.15 on each and that leaves 0.7 for the last element so if I just tap that in you'll see that we get sort of a nice distribution there now this border is uh, the color that I was mentioning earlier that I'm going to use sort of like for most of the UI so I'll copy that color and I'll paste it into this into that tint box there so now we've got that um, that sort of colour that we wanted and this is a good time to go into padding because I don't want all of these elements to sort of touch the edges I want them all to sort of have a nice pattern from the top and bottom so what I'll do uh, in order to achieve that is I'll go to the horizontal box which is holding all of these elements and I'll open up the padding drop down and you'll see how far we want to pad it from the top left right and bottom so from the top I'm gonna go five and because I've done that and I want there to be sort of like a uniform five units of space between every element that means that the bottom would have to be half of that so I'll go for 2.5 and when I add an element into this horizontal box I'll then want it to be 2.5 from the top and 5 from the bottom so for the individual elements as well we can sort of pad those because for example I want this to touch the edge here but I don't want it to touch the edges of each of these I want there to be gaps in between all of these. So if I go to the border and I check the pattern on that, I'll set from the right to be 2.5 and this is just so that they're all uniform and then the right to be 2.5 and left. 
the right and left and then we'll do the same here so it's just the left on this one 2.5 so now you'll see there's a nice five unit spacing between every element now this border it requires its own horizontal box so we know how to do that now we can just drag that in and what you'll see is that it automatically comes in with a bit of padding now that can be based on the content padding of the border that we dragged in so if we're selecting on the border the background element you'll see that it automatically comes in with 4 and 2 and the horizontal box adopts that so if I set this to 0 and look back at the border you'll notice that that padding for the content has also gone to that and if I change it again so they're sort of relative right so now that we've got that we want to fill this horizontal box with a couple of things so we're going to need an image again and one thing that we already know is that images without scale boxes don't keep their native ratios when they're inside a horizontal or vertical box so the first thing we'll do is we'll drag a scale box in so that scale box is there now and then we're going to drag an image in so an image is in the top here uh, under common so we'll drag that image in and it's got no, uh, no image to use so if we click on that image and we go over to the right hand side in the details and we'll pick one of the guns so you'll see now that that's filled sort of the area that we wanted it to fill and uh, in the scale box you'll notice that it's not actually filling so if I fill that it's going to snap sort of to the center because uh, it's filling the whole area so in order to change that I can change the horizontal alignment of this image within its scale box so I'll make it snap to the left hand side I'll pad the scale box as well just by five units just so that it's not quite touching the edges and if you want to get rid of these dotted lines just press G or click this uh, this little icon up here just so you can look at your UI and sort of be like okay yeah, I'm happy with that but the dotted grids do help you select elements so the next thing that we need is ammo and um, some little borders to sort of split areas up so within this horizontal box the next thing if we do it in order the next thing that we want is a text block and that's going to be sort of the ammo so what we'll do is we'll we'll just give this a large amount of ammo for now 223 will do and then we'll fill and then if I copy that and paste it into the horizontal box now we've got two sets of ammo so this is the reserves and this one is going to be our actual current ammo so we'll set that to something more realistic for current ammo and then I know that between these I want sort of a border to split them and on the right hand side I also want another border to sort of tell us the colour of the weapon based on the Destiny UI so I'll drag one border in and you'll notice that that's not filled so we'll click fill if I copy that again and paste it into the horizontal box another thing that we can uh, do is click on an element and sort of shift it using these arrows so this one wants to be over here and this one wants to stay on the right hand side so what I'm going to do is um, I know that the width of this image is uh, exactly the width I want it to be so if I click that to auto it's just going to fill a nice area on the right hand side and I know that I want this to basically fill almost nothing so we'll go for sort of like 0 0.003 and you'll see that that's really hardly visible and that's probably because these two elements are, uh, are filling quite a large area so we'll set those to like 0.2 now what we should see is that little bar sort of like sitting in there so what I'll do with this text box is I'm gonna center align it although we could full width it and then center align it itself and the actual ammo box I want to be uh, right justified I also want this to be larger so I'll set the size to about 60 and I want this little border here I want this to um, to sort of occupy a lower area I don't want it to be touching the top and bottom so I'm just going to change that by 10 from the top and bottom and I also don't want it to be that bright so I'll change the tint of it and maybe even the opacity so that'll do um, next thing that I want to do is maybe change the size of this um, this box here just to make all these sort of square and match up uh, to the abilities right so we keep some consistency in the design but now that that is done we can pretty much copy this horizontal box here so if I just uh, copy the border that it's part of I can start putting that into this bottom box now the first thing that I want within this horizontal box is what's called a spacer which basically means for a percentage of the screen equal to these abilities which is we know is 30% I want there to just be a gap so that's why I'm going to use a spacer, spacer is good for this 
So you'll see it's just there. And I'll set it to 0.3. And then to the right of that spacer, I want two weapons to be displayed using the setup that we just made for this horizontal box. So I'll need a vertical box for that so that I have one above the other. So if we go into panels, scroll down to vertical box, drop that into the horizontal box, and click on fill. You'll notice that it's filling over, and that's because uh, it's still set to one. So let's make that um, set out correctly. And the other thing that we'll notice is because we have padding, of around 10 units if we look at this 5 and this 5 it means that this box here needs at least 10 padding probably from the left so now that that's set up we can paste our two uh, boxes in so we've got our first one and then we'll paste our second one in you'll notice that they're both in there and the texts are all a bit messy I know that I don't really need um, these extra text boxes I don't really need these um, spaces and what I do need to do now is make sure that the percentage of space between these two are, uh, are set up correctly. So I know that this is 0.2, right? And we just lost 0.2, so I'm going to add 0.2 to both of these in terms of percentage. So it's now going to be 0.75. That means that these are all going to be aligned nicely. I'm going to change the colour of these because we know that uh, secondary weapons are kind of like a maybe a greenish colour and our heavy weapons are kind of like a purple. So drag those two colours in. And uh, the other thing is that we don't have the padding so let's go back and change the padding in probably the parents of these. So if we look at the hierarchy we've got a horizontal box with the spacer inside it and the other half of the horizontal box is a vertical box and within that vertical box are two borders so it's these two borders that we need to pad and we're only padding them from the top and bottom you'll notice already that it actually has content padding in here this border you'll see it's actually padded from the left so we'll turn that padding off and now all of this lines up so that would have been the padding that was remaining from when we copied it earlier We'll turn that padding off and now I just want to make sure that I'm um, padding both of these uh, a little bit differently actually so the first one's going to pad 2.5 from the bottom and the second one is going to pad 2.5 from the top We were actually doing that in content, so you notice that didn't actually do what we wanted it to do. It actually shrunk the contents. So that's a good little, um, good little mistake on my part. So we'll hit 2.5 on the pad in there, and you'll notice it does it to all sides. So if you open that drop down, you can make sure it doesn't do it from the left, nor the top, nor the right. We do want to do it from the bottom. So on this one, we want 2.5 from the top. Now we've got our uniform uh, padding happening. So that's pretty much it. The other thing that we can do is change these images here. So we've got gun 2 and maybe gun 3. And that sort of takes you over sort of most of the stuff here. And if you liked that sort of like quick overview of how to do that, uh, let me know in the comments. I can animate this uh, and sort of show how you might want to go ahead and animate that sort of stuff. Uh, things like the abilities, maybe changing out these images depending on what weapon you've got and even moving these around. But that'd be quite a longer video because it would take would take some time to sort of code all that up and, uh, and that takes a long time to tutorialise. So I really hope you enjoyed that and uh, thanks for watching Let's Dev with Ren. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed it and if you did please uh, hit subscribe, hit like, uh, let me know what you think in the comments and what sort of tutorials that you're looking for and then I can go ahead and hopefully make sort of like 10 minute-ish videos to help you guys out and, um, and we'll carry on with Let's Dev with Ren. Cheers, catch you next time.